After losing his bid for re-election as Ohio Attorney General, Richard Cordray has landed squarely on his feet. President Obama this week introduced Cordray as his nominee to head the new Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. Cordray was already serving as the agency's director of enforcement, but he was picked for the spot when the bureau's brainchild, Elizabeth Warren, drew fierce Republican opposition. I am proud to nominate uh, Richard Cordray uh, to this post. And we've been recently reminded uh, why this job is going to be so important. There is an army of lobbyists and lawyers right now working to water down the protections and the reforms that we passed. We're not going to let that happen. While Attorney General Cordray drew national attention for taking on lenders for unscrupulous practices that helped lead to the foreclosure crisis, and of course, any introduction of Cordray is not complete unless you bring out the old video of him winning on Jeopardy. Uh, that's why all his confirmation, uh, all his answers at his confirmation hearings will be in the form of a question. <laughs> that's a joke. <laughs> All jokes aside, uh, he was the, Reggie Fields, he was the logical choice after they didn't want to go with Elizabeth Warren, given his track record here in, in Ohio. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, again, he was only attorney general for two years, but prior to that, he was a tr state treasurer also. So he has some experience, uh, you know, dealing with the, uh, the banking industry in that, that regard as well. But in just the two years as, as an attorney general, I mean, he really did kind of, you know, uh, bring about sort of a national uh, presence uh, for taking on banks, for addressing issues uh, such as uh, predatory lending practices amongst the banks and, and mortgage uh, fraud and different issues like that. So uh, I think this is sort of a, a tailor-made job for him. The question is whether or not you know he's going to get it or how he's going to get it, uh, because the Republicans obviously in Washington, uh, they weren't in favor of Elizabeth Warren. And they're not so much against Cordray, but they just don't like the idea of this agency in itself, period. So, Yeah, the Republicans claim that the agency is too independent. There's not enough checks and balances on, on the part of the congressional oversight and that kind of thing. But uh, the supporters say that's what they should be like, should be, should be free from all that stuff. Yeah, the House, I, I understand, has passed a bill that, that uh, uh, you know, puts brakes on this new agency uh, with Republican votes, of course. But over in the Senate, the Democrats rule, so uh, it's not likely that that bill is going to pass. And the, I mean, the president has already said that he's going to veto anything. So, I mean, the House passes it. It's more or less symbolic. To, I mean, the president will never never go for it. Uh, but I think ultimately what's going to happen is, is the president's probably going to have to use what, what's known as a, a recess appointment, mm -hmm. where he's going to have to wait until the Senate goes on vacation for the rest of the summer and then sort of appoint him uh, uh, Richard Cordray in that way. And of course it's temporary, but it will at least allow him to be able to serve through the remainder of, of the president's current term. And that re would return him to Ohio in December of 2012, which is about <laughs> the time that, you know, he might be thinking about running for governor. Michael Miller, does this make him a more formidable candidate? to take on John Kasich or whoever the Republican nominee might be. Well, I think uh, Richard's a formidable candidate with or without this position. He's a guy that, uh, as the Attorney General has said, uh, Mike DeWine, uh, uh, people like him, and indeed they do. I mean, uh, there are some really good people in politics, and I think he's one of them. Uh, he's highly qualified and so forth. And as I said here, I think six months ago or so when we were on, and I was on, and I said I thought he would be the Democrat candidate for governor in uh, 2012, and I think he's still Still will be. Can I, can I, I say, the wrong I, year. Right? I used to think that being attorney general and being a consumer advocate really helped you run and win elections. But obviously it didn't work for Cordray last time. It didn't work for former attorneys general Betty Montgomery and, and Lee Fisher. They, they were strong consumer advocates. It didn't even work for the guy who changed the attorney general's job into that of consumer advocate in the 1970s, Bill Brown. I thought he was going places. He couldn't even win the governor's primary, the primary in 1982. So uh, this idea that uh, that's a great you know, consumer advocate is a great populist thing to run, run on may not be as strong as, as it appears. Yeah, I think it's really going to depend on what happens in the presidential and congressional elections in 12 as well, in 2012 as well, because if, <clears throat> as, as I expect, Obama's return to the White House, it may very well be that Cordray stays on, in, as you said, as Reggie said, uh, do some sort of a, a, of a recess appointment, but then if he stays on, I can guarantee you one of the people who's lobbying the hardest for Rich Cordray to get confirmed is Congressman Tim Ryan. Because I think that that clears the way for, for Ryan to be the gubernatorial candidate for the Democrats in, in 2014. Rob Portman, might he vote to confirm uh, Richard Cordray, the Republican senator from Ohio, if 
if the vote came up? I don't think there's much question that, that we could expect Senator Portman to support a Cordray appointment. I think the question is going to be whether he's going to join in the filibuster with the Republicans in the Senate to keep the agency from being created. Yeah. Well, um, but Senator Portman is among the Republicans who signed on saying that they were not confirm anyone to this position unless there were changes made to the agency itself. And so he was one of the, I, I think it was maybe 40, 44 uh, Republicans in the, in the um, General Assembly uh, there in Washington who signed on. So I don't, I don't know if it's a slam dunk that he will, you know, sign on. So even though as a hometown guy, he still has philosophical opposition. Mm -hmm. To this, to this agency. But to the, I think I think Reggie's right, but I think it's to the agency. I don't think it's yeah. to Rich Cordray. I've known Rich Cordray for a long time, and I don't I don't know anybody who doesn't like Rich Cordray and doesn't respect his his abilities.